Hey, this is Strips with Joe's Gaming Electronics, and today I'm going to be showing you how to replace your iPad Air 4 screen. So, to get started on this process, what you're going to want to do is power your iPad off. Just slide off. And then we'll be using a heat gun at 200 degrees Celsius with a low pressure to slowly heat up the side of the black screen, or the side right here where it's black. Now I'll be using my star tool and inserting it right here where the volume up and volume down button is. I'll just be placing the star in between where the LCD and the actual housing is. And just gently trying to pry in there. If I can do this. And then once it's in, I kind of like to just heat up a little bit more uh, around the area. as to make sure that you don't end up shattering your LCD more because if you do shatter your LCD like this a little bit then replacing your screen is still fairly easy but if you're trying to replace a completely shattered LCD it becomes a lot more difficult and takes a lot more time so all I'm trying to do here is prevent it from breaking even more now kind of pry upwards a little bit now I will be making enough wiggle room with the star, the metal star, and inserting what you guys would call a guitar pick to some of you guys. But for me, this is my favorite tool for taking screens off. And once I have it in, I want to make sure that I don't go too far in. I would say, here let me grab an extra one for you guys here. If you're bringing your pick in too far you can end up going in and damaging the screen sometimes your LCD is good as this one is and you don't want to ruin that so if you're coming in you kind of keep the pick like this deep in when you're going along the iPad and you'll be able to see right here as I'm going forth I'm just slowly applying pressure where I'm heating where I'm applying heat to the screen I'm gonna just put a second pick in place towards the top. That way the adhesive that I already broke up here is gonna end up going back on the iPad. I'm trying to stick back down, just keep it in place. I'm kind of approaching a crack here. I'm not sure how well this picks up on the camera. But as I'm approaching this crack, I want to be careful that I'm not applying too much pressure uh, with sliding the pick this way. I kind of want to pry upwards more. That way I don't end up creating more cracks. So I'm just going to be extra cautious right here. As you can see, I didn't end up cracking the LCD anymore. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. So if you end up getting your pick that falls out like right there, I like to come back to where I placed this other pick and just slowly work back there, uh, apply some heat. And then just slowly work your way back to where you were. Shouldn't be too difficult. Now as you're approaching corners, you're going to want to make sure that with the corners you're treating them almost like a crack in the LCD where you're going to be you're going to want to be a little more careful and you're going to want to make sure that you're using your heat gun to soften up the adhesive that is holding the screen down and you don't want to go in much deeper than this because again then you might end up either cracking the screen or damaging your LCD further and then I typically like to add another spudger towards the bottom of the screen in case I do end up slipping again that way I don't have to climb all the way back up towards the top of the screen and I can zoom where I left off. So if you're adding another spudger in, I like to just kind of push up on the screen a little bit, not too much, just add enough room for the other one to kind of come in where you want. Just like that, got another one in. 
push this through carefully. So I'm coming around the corner. Gonna apply some more heat. Since I do see a crack here. And something I do, something I do like to occasionally do is if I see a very big crack that doesn't seem to be wanting to lift up like I want to, I'll come back in with my metal star and I will kind of do what we did in the beginning. I'll insert it in between the housing and the LCD. If I can get it here. And I will just pry it, I'll pry it upwards and try to use my spudger to get underneath it. That way I can continue to go through with the screen not cracking further. And as you can see there, I did in fact get the other part of the scratched screen, screen under the pick so now I can proceed forward. And I will be putting my last spudger in right here just because there's quite a big crack and I do want to keep the screen all together. So I'll be inserting my last spudger right here in order to keep it all intact. And once you've come all the way around on the screen, I like to kind of put my fingernails in between where the screen and the housing is. And from here, what you're gonna to wanna to start doing is going around the entire screen and just heating it up lightly so you can pull the screen off because there's still some adhesive sticking to the screen quite strongly still. But if you heat it up, and you slowly go around the screen, you'll be able to pull the screen off. So I'm gonna go from the up and down button side. I'm going to just slowly start peeling back and using heat. Occasionally, I will see some adhesive like right here now I'll just break it off and you can go all the way around the screen doing this method just going very lightly trying to peel it up you can see the adhesive here is peeling off ever so slowly so I'm gonna just come in and help just tear it all now once you've gone around all of the edges again and remove the adhesive completely, you can just start peeling the screen up. And for reference, the up and down button are on the right side of the iPad. You want to peel down from the left side because there is LCD ribbons located on the right side. And if you do not want to rip them, your safest option is by going from the left side of the screen. And there is some fairly strong adhesive here on the top that you may need to go in with a flathead. Be very careful with the spudgers. Just kind of cut it all off. Now we'll be slowly opening the screen. So now that we have the screen off, we'll be holding it and removing some of the shields. So from here, I'm just gonna use a spudger that we saw on our website. I'm going to come in from the side, pop this ribbon off and then do the same for these two bottom ones. And now once these ribbons are off, I am able to peel the screen completely off. Some of the glue is fighting me still and I will be setting my bad screen to the side. All right, now that I have the screen off, I'm going to use my flathead that is also located on our website. I'm just gonna come and peel off all of this extra adhesive that was left by the previous screen. What I'm gonna do just kind of go in from the side and work my way around trying to get it all off. And once you start approaching the battery right here, do keep in mind that if your flathead accidentally slips and hits the battery, then you will very likely 
have a bad battery on your hands and maybe sparks. So just be very careful as you're going through and removing the glue here. We will be grabbing the bad screen and taking off the magnets located here and here. Pry underneath the magnets and it comes in two pieces here. It does bend as you can see here. It does bend and that's normal. You just want to make sure that it doesn't bend more than this because then it will break and snap in half and that does happen pretty easily. Now you can dispose of your screen or do whatever you would like with it, your bad one. And I will be taping up the iPad screen right here with this handy dandy tape that you can find on our website. And what I'd like to do here is I just line up as close as I can to the edge of the housing and I just press firmly down as I'm going along the edge. And again, I'll just press down firmly, make sure that the tape is on the screen or not on the screen, on the housing. And I will come in with my pry tool or not my pry tool, my pliers and just snip and something to look out for when you're doing this you want to make sure that the tape is on the bottom and it doesn't go on the sides right here so as you can see there's no tape on the side right here and it's strictly on the bottom but if your tape starts coming on the side like for example right here you can see i left some extra there is some tape on the sides of the screen and if you leave any on the sides when you're applying your screen onto the housing it will poke up and you will notice that again I'm just going to line up with this housing and just guide my finger onto the, the housing to make sure it sticks well. Sometimes I use my fingernail or if you don't want to do that, I could use the spudger and just press down. The reason for that is, again, you just want to ensure that this tape sticks well onto the sides because it will be holding your screen down and you do not want it to come up. A bad tape job will result in your screen coming up prematurely and you guys can see there I was guiding it all along and I did end up I did end up going along this side of the screen so right here you see I kind of brought the tape along and all you got to do to correct that is lift it up just lift it up and then try to guide, guide it back so it's as close as it can be to where the screen should be and then snip it and the reason I am not snipping it all the way down here is because I like to go in with the edge of the spudger and I will dig in as hard as I can where the edge of the screen is and it makes a line for me so i'll do it right here and i'll show you guys this line that's on the tape and if you can see like that crease what i end up doing is i learned this trick where if i just come in with the razor and go in from an angle and cut along that crease line then it gives me the most flush screen around the corners so i'll give you guys an example here now we'll just go along this crease with my razor and just like that the excess tape is gone and the corner has no extra tape, which means your screen will be on there with no problems. And for your camera, you're going to want to nip the tape prematurely. That way your camera doesn't have tape going uh, underneath it or above it. And you can kind of see right here where it narrows down and then it starts expanding again. What I like to do is I just kind of cut it a little bit before it starts narrowing down. That way I don't ever have any issues with the tape. And then I just start it back up. Now I'm done with this tape. I'll be setting it to the side. Now I'm done with my razor. I will set it to the side. Now what we're going to, going to want to do is we're going to want to make room for these magnets that we took off from the other screen. That way you still have the same functions with your iPad as you previously did. And what I like to do is I just make sure that the glue, I make sure that the glue is all flat and flush black adhesive right here is black and flush. And once I did that, I will go to the right side of the screen where the magnets were previously. And I will peel up this layer that has been keeping the tape clean. And right here you will see two kind of divots in the tape and what you want to do is come in with your pliers and you'll snip right here where this divot starts coming in so the tape starts kind of going down like this you'll want to snip that so I snip it right here and then right here as well and once I snipped it I will press it down against the back side of the housing and I will place down my first magnet and for the first magnet it doesn't matter how you place it I'm just making sure that it sticks onto the tape that I applied and it is sitting flush. I'm going to just start removing the tape on the left side of the aluminum housing as well. Okay, and now for the second part, I'm going to grab my new screen, take it out of its fancy bag, and I'm going to 
apply the magnet where I'm going to apply the magnet where it would sit on the housing. So yeah, as you could tell, I lined it up. Um, fairly, you can eyeball this, it doesn't have to be 100% precise. And I'm going to just apply the magnet where I could see that it would be placed. So right here, the magnet, fine. And it will be laying right here on the screen. And right here, there is no room for you to set the magnet down. So I will just be applying it onto the screen right here. I would, I would use spudgers here just to make sure you don't scratch your screen. Okay, I'll grab some tape. Just a small strip, enough to, enough to hold the magnet down. And I'll set my magnet down, and then I'm going to just apply some pressure very, very lightly to ensure that the magnet is stuck on the adhesive that I put down there. Now, from here, I'm going to apply some pressure on the ribbons and put them into place. Now I'm just gonna grab my Phillips. I'm going to put these shields back down. And you do not want your screws too tight on these shields. All right, now that I have that all done, I'm going to be removing the tape. All right, now that I have all the tape off, I'm going to be guiding the bottom right corner into place and then doing the same, lining it up and then going to this corner, lining it up, going to this corner, making sure that it is all symmetrical and lined up. After that, I'm going to start applying pressure on the corners where the adhesive is and trying to make sure that it sticks. And after that, you can see that the screen is flush with the housing. With that being said, this is Strips with Joe's Gaming Electronics heading off. Any of the parts that you may have wanted to use in this repair will be found down below. Peace out.